Hi, this is your host, Sabin Bharti, and today we have with us Brian Bellendorf, Executive Director of the Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative. Brian, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. So I want to know from your perspective, how do you see uh, this project, the Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative? The Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative uh, came about when a group of us at the Linux Foundation realized at the beginning of the pandemic that, I mean, everybody, I'm sure, as, as you were in lockdown, as you were realizing this is a whole new world in front of us uh, uh, with some huge new challenges, you know, I'm sure we, like everybody, were asking ourselves, you know, um, uh, how, what, how can we apply what we know how to do to the fight against this pandemic? And some of us identified, you know, a bunch of people talking about exposure notification as a way to scale up uh, contact tracing, contact tracing, which has been done for hundreds of years to try to track down where is the disease uh, spread occurring and, and who's getting sick and who else should we notify and ask them to quarantine. And that was going to be very challenging at the scale of, of what we thought we'd be facing. And so a lot of people were talking about ways to automate that using GPS, using Wi-Fi, using Bluetooth, so that when phones of people came into contact with each other, you could try to automatically figure out who else was exposed. But we also saw some pretty substantial um, uh, privacy issues with that uh, and uh, concerns that if every um, city or state or, or uh, country developed their own approach, or worse, if you had competing approaches, that you would really hinder the effectiveness of, the, uh, of, of, uh, of this approach. And so we started to, to do our research, think about, figure out who was working on the right kinds of technologies here, found a group called the TCN Coalition who was focusing on, 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 on a very privacy preserving way to do this using Bluetooth low energy and then saw as we were doing our research, that model get adopted uh, by Google and Apple in rolling out something they called the Google Apple Exposure Notification APIs. Um, and we said, okay, this starts to make some sense. Let's figure out are there projects in this domain who uh, everybody, by the way, was saying this software needs to be open source so it can be trusted, so it can be shared widely, so that everybody can bootstrap on it. But no one was really setting themselves up to organize that effort uh, uh, and, and do it at the scale that you know we've seen you need to with, with uh, open source software. So. We stepped in, set this up, invited some projects. Uh, we recruited two, one called COVID Green, another called COVID Shield. Um, and these are now the basis for the apps used in Ireland, in Canada, in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, a whole bunch of other states are in the route to, to setting it up as well as other countries. Um, and we've, we've done a lot to try to show, here's how you use these apps to in the right way and build upon the work being done by other cities and states and other technology organizations. And in the course of doing this, uh, so not only have we helped work with the community to get these apps deployed uh, and do that in a privacy preserving way, help explain the model, we realized that for Linux Foundation Public Health, we really should be orienting ourselves around the broader set of needs for public health authorities. Public health authorities have been chronically underfunded uh, as organizations. They've been, uh, uh, they don't have a lot of technologists on staff. Typically, they've tended to be focused on data and analytics, which is great, um, but building repeatable systems has been a challenge. It's not something that they have vendors coming to them saying that they know how to do. And so we realized exposure notification was really a subset of a broader category of technologies that could be deployed in the fight against the pandemic. And so that's what LFPH is focusing on, is organizing industry and other types of of, uh, associations, academic partners, but really focusing on how do we meet the needs of the public health authorities and build relationships with the public health authorities where we can help do capacity building on their part uh, around common technologies in the fight against this and the next pandemic and future pandemics and other broader public health needs in the long term. I want to talk about the scope of the foundation, but before that, I also want to talk about uh, the COVID-19 uh, Credentials Initiative. Talk a bit about, you know, what is it about, uh, why Linux Foundation is hosting it, and who will be benefiting from it? One set of us inside the Linux Foundation realized, hey, exposure notification was going to be a place where open source software was really needed and, and an effort that we could help uh, be the center of, you know, was really needed to, to address. <clears throat> uh, the second most interesting uh, uh, use case uh, that many of us started to focus on was this question of vaccination records and test results and and this kind of need as you know we all were very optimistic and and hoped that a vaccine would arrive soon um even before one did we realized that people being able to prove that they had had a negative test was going to be important in terms of helping people get back to work <clears throat> helping people i uh, 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 perhaps get on board a plane you know those sorts of things uh and so 
There had been some related work taking place inside of another community that I've been leading for five years uh, called Hyperledger, which is, again, a part of the Linux Foundation, focusing on digital identity uh, uh, in, a, in a really different way than traditionally done with, you know, login with Facebook, login with Twitter, all of your important data being on, on in the hands of a small set of companies um, uh, that you use to prove your identity somewhere. Uh, or to share credentials somewhere, and instead pivoting that to a very user-centered approach that says, from a, a wallet that I hold, <clears throat> I have documents, I have credentials that relate to a whole number of things, right? To uh, uh, perhaps a driver's license, a passport, a diploma, a uh, title to my house, you know, uh, these sorts of things that, uh, uh, you know, are, are identity documents and uh, documents that are secured, that are attached to me and who I am, uh, but for which we really had no infrastructure for. So when the pandemic hit, there were a bunch of technologists within our community and even beyond <clears throat> who started to say, hey, how might we use this technology to help digitize vaccination records, digitize test credentials, those sorts of things. They organized themselves into a volunteer community called the COVID Credentials Initiative, um, started to iterate on <clears throat> use cases, explaining how the technology that had been built could be applied to that, tried to identify gaps in the technology stack um, that would keep it from being used at the scale of every citizen on this planet uh, and their vaccination record, right? I, I, uh, and, but really started to organize the, the startups to the big companies and the other partners that would be necessary to really drive a standardization effort here and drive a common technology effort. So uh, LFPH has now recognized the strength of that community by bringing them into LFPH, uh, uh, being able to provide some funding for some core leaders in that community to be able to continue their work in organizing it. Uh, and really what we're hoping to do is, again, with our hat on, that we're, our focus is for the public health authorities, making sure that they are informed, that they make good technology procurement decisions, and, and be able to paint the landscape for them, uh, for them of, here's the technology options. Here's the best of breed. Here are the, the vendors you can work with who won't trap you into vendor specific silos, right? Uh, and here's the path that allows us to get to true interoperability so that you can get a vaccine in one country, get on a plane, fly to another country, and use a proof of that vaccine as an ability to, say, attend a concert in another country. And these are all like entirely different use cases that need to come together around the patient. So that's, that's what we're focusing on at Linux Foundation Public Health and our work with the COVID creds initiative. Um, and ultimately, at some point, that will also involve open source software for uh, the essential building blocks of this kind of infrastructure. The last point that you made, that's where going to be my second question, is that if you look at this uh, initiative, most of the Linux Foundation projects, they kind of become umbrella projects themselves. They host a lot of different projects within them, number one. Number two is that a lot of projects, they also work in concert and with other projects you mentioned, Hyperledger, you know, which is, you know, blockchain. But but then there are so I want to understand you know you you joined the project I want to also know first of all what as you said you were involved from the very early on but you were also heading there was an unfortunate incident that happened that kind of created a you know kind of vacancy there uh, we all missed Dencon but uh, why you got interested in the project why you decided hey you know what I should take a helm of this project and now what happens to Hyperledger project also. No, certainly uh, the, the true leadership around the founding of the Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative came from Dan Kahn, who um, uh, previous to this was the uh, lead of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, has been a part of the Linux Foundation since before I joined. Uh, in 2015, I believe he started 2013, um, uh, has a long history with the Linux community. And he, tragically, he passed away uh, back in October um, I, and uh, not related to COVID, related to, to other, other, another condition, but, um, uh, but he poured his life and poured his heart and soul into this project. And it was a very personal thing to get this launched. And obviously that affected uh, and, 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 and um, uh, drove the rest of us at Linux Foundation to figure out how to honor that memory by not only continuing this project, but asking, you know, perhaps this is a point in time where what we figured out how to do at the Linux Foundation and even uh, uh, in the open source community, that we really start to talk about how this can be applied to the big fights in our world, right? To the fight for against the pandemic, uh, against the fight for better public health, uh, and and uh, and beyond. And so, um, I love public health is really our, our first foray into this. Perhaps we'll we've also started to step into climate and energy uh, and and a few other spaces that you could say perhaps align with the um, sustainable development goals. Um, 
And, and in parallel to this, within the Hyperledger community, we've really started to realize that you know the key use cases in the blockchain space that we've been pioneering, the enterprise blockchain space, have really been around supply chain traceability, around um, uh, digital identity credentials, around a, a lot of other use cases that also speak to these SDGs um, and, and have particular application to healthcare as well. And I have a tiny bit of background in healthcare. I spent two years working with the Department of Health and Human Services uh, on open source software to help make it easier to share medical records back about a decade ago. Um, so I had been watching and certainly uh, interested in how the hyperledger community uh, was applying this to healthcare and realized, you know, why don't we, why don't we up our game on this? So I, I uh, changed my title at the Linux Foundation. I'm still executive director on Hyperledger, but I'm now general manager for blockchain, healthcare, and identity initiatives at the Linux Foundation, bringing together all these different efforts and making sure they're harmonized, they're aligned, that we're not duplicating efforts, but that we're also going out there and figuring out how do we really to make the most of these building blocks that the Linux Foundation has put together in the fight uh, for better healthcare, for, for uh, uh, the ways in which identity is core to, to so many of the other fights uh, uh, in this world around uh, achieving the SDGs and, and beyond. So it's really exciting. Um, it's really uh, nerve wracking a bit to think about, hey, we might <clears throat> really be able to apply uh, what we know about open source software to these big fights, but um, we're all supercharged about this for 2021. And the second part of it is, uh, the question is also that, uh, can you talk about uh, the, the the scope of this uh, initiative? As you mentioned, you, know, you may start building some uh, building blocks, your software stacks. So when we look at this foundation or this project, what will it look like? You know, are you going to build software? Is it going to be you know hosting these kind of you know uh, certification? What will it look like? You know, let's say five months from now. Well, the core of every Linux Foundation project is software. Uh, that is our bread and butter. That is our theory of change. Our theory of change is that if you build great open source software at the core of the, a set of needs by a, a broad community, that there's a leverage that comes from that that lifts all boats, right? Um, and and you, and the way to make it sustainable is to build a commercially viable uh, and 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 diverse commercial ecosystem around that code, right? So uh, uh, to be clear, uh, I, I, we are still we still need industry to help us write that code from volunteer developers all the way to the big companies in the world working together on, on common code. But to make that code work and, and get deployed out there, you need to do a lot of uh, communications about what the code does, why it's a good approach. You need to do a lot of coalition building. Um, sometimes I, I say my, my unofficial title is nerd diplomat because I spend a lot of my time trying to talk to people who might be competitors, who might think of themselves as uh, uh, perhaps not aligned with what we're doing. <laughs> Uh, and help them understand how they can play a role, how they can use the software that's being built, but also potentially contribute and bring their own ideas and their own initiatives in under, under the umbrella. And so there's a lot of uh, bridge building that we do uh, to make this work. And, and, and I think that's, that's, that's really a big part of what LFPH does, but, uh, but also the Linux Foundation as a whole. Uh, you have also been involved with the, with the governments in previous you know, uh, you know, uh, administrations. And now we are going through another change, transition is going on where we may get more, this, this may be not part of the question, but I'm trying to keep it not political at all. But uh, healthcare is, or you know, the, this project, it's, it's beyond just the scope of private sector. You know, you may get involved with the government as well. So do you see any potential of working with governments around the globe as well? Because it's just not about this pandemic. For the future pandemic also, you have to get involved at that level. You cannot do yeah. it in isolation. Absolutely. Uh, this has to be a global effort. And we have already with Linux Foundation Public Health been working with health authorities uh, in Ireland, in Canada, uh, in, uh, uh, in other par parts of Europe, uh, uh, and have started to open conversations with health authorities in Asia. In fact, we have as a member of Hyperledger, I'm uh, sorry, of uh, Linux Foundation Public Health, Tencent, uh, one of the largest IT companies in China. Uh, and we're very hopeful that the technology that's being built can be uh, can be used by 
countries around the world to 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 be a part of this fight. And and really, we would be silly if we if we were said we were just focusing on the U.S. or just focusing on us on on even a, a particular region because. Uh, talent is distributed everywhere as, again, something that the open source community has really demonstrated is um, you really can build these communities that are that are global first, right? Even even if they're small uh, to start. Uh, but I, um, but yeah, the, this is this bug is the same. I mean, there's there's mutations and variants around the world, but we're all in the same fight here. And and in so many other ways, public health is a truly global fight. So we are working uh, intently with public health authorities around the world to make this work. Right now, we are talking about COVID-19, but uh, the scope of this project, does it go beyond that? Because if you look at, for example, cancer is one of the biggest you know, challenges that humanity is facing today. And uh, one of the major work that is going on is imaging. You know, if you can you know, scan early in the time, then you can also... And of course, a lot of technologies are being developed. AI ML is playing a very big role. Uh, open source is also playing a big role. So do you think that uh, the scope of this project will go beyond that? And you will also uh, focus on those issues, those diseases as well. And uh, the, on the positive side, a lot of deep learning AI ML data projects are already there within the Linux Foundation. A lot of open source technologies are already there within the Linux Foundation. So talk about the wider scope of this project. Right. No, there's a really good question. So, um, so there's a lot of aspects to healthcare and, and to technology and from the, the application of information technology to healthcare. I love the example of using machine learning and AI to scan uh, x-rays to try to detect uh, signs of cancerous lesions earlier. Um, that's certainly a, a, a hugely appropriate application of the tech. And as you might know, at the Linux Foundation, we have projects in big data and we have projects in AI. Um, uh, and, and as I understand it, that those technologies are being used in some of the the, the trials out there around um, applying that to the the, the the fight against cancer. From a from the Linux Foundation public health point of view, our lens is what do the public health authorities really care about? Right, something like an early detection of cancer by scanning an image is a clinical type of issue. It's something that uh, people who build systems for doctors and hospitals and and the like are going to really care about. Uh, at a public health level, what you care about is uh, things like uh, um, uh, health surveillance, like understanding, okay, across my entire country or state, uh, is the incidence of cancer uh, uh, stronger in some areas rather than others? And it turns out that it's the areas that are close to highways or rail lines or industrial plants or something like that, right? Um, I, I, so that's where there's a bit of a nuance to it, right? If a project were to emerge, an open source project that that said, hey, we want to use machine learning to, to do x-ray scans, we'd certainly take a look at it, particularly if there was a public health authority behind it saying, hey, we plan to use this as a public health tool, um, uh, especially for to improve the, the health of the population as a whole. Um, one thing we also are very careful to try to do is say, hey, if there's a better existing project that this should go towards, um, uh, then let's do that. I certainly don't think we will be the only health project inside the Linux Foundation, and I know we're not the only one outside the Linux Foundation. We're really keen to, to work with anybody who's got successful traction with their projects already um, uh, on that kind of thing, and really look at it with the lens of what do the public health authorities need, uh, and I think that'll help set the scope for us. As we were talking earlier, climate change. Let's say you know that will create a lot of challenges. So any any health related issue or topic that arises from that, which involves you know government sector, you know public, that's where you'll be playing a role. If I'm not wrong, it could be it could be poverty, it could be malnutrition in you know a lot of you know poor countries. It could be a lot of different things. So anything, uh, whatever impact there will be on the larger population, that's where you will get involved. It goes beyond just this pandemic. Absolutely, you know, there's a lot of interest in the healthcare community these days and something called the social determinants of health, where things like education levels or, or substance abuse or mental and mental health and the roles those play in physical health and um, driving outcomes and affecting the cost of health care in communities and that sort of thing. Um, I, there's my cat in the background. Um, and so those, be, those kinds of projects uh, could be appropriate. It'd certainly be something to consider. Um, you know, we are trying to be focused right now on the fight against the pandemic, but, um, you know, the pandemic is affecting so many different parts of our lives uh, that is certainly something we're taking a look at so anything else or you think we are good there and we can wrap this up it's a new year it's a really exciting time uh, to be thinking about how do we might apply these technologies to to some of the big challenges in the world the pandemic but also beyond um, and I really want to encourage developers out there who <clears throat> perhaps they're not in the healthcare space now 
Perhaps they're not, uh, they haven't been a part of, uh, you know, fighting the pandemic or being a part of these other challenges. Um, I'd encourage them to take a look. I mean, one of the things we really hope to do is connect developers who want to have a positive impact with projects that could use their help with uh, the, the, the public health authorities or other people working in that space. Um, we never have enough developers working on things. And, um, you know, if, if your day job means, you know, making ad networks more, more performant by 5.5%, maybe your, your, your hobby or your night job uh, might be helping make the world a better place. Um, and if that's of interest to you, come to lfph.io or the broader Linux Foundation site, and let's see if we can connect you to, to something that, that, that helps us all. Brian, thank you so much for talking to me today about the project, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.